for Criminal Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba, writer Richard Stein, joins me to discuss his book title, Seven Votes, How World War II Changed South Africa Forever. Um, your book unpacks how South Africa's history could have turned out differently if seven more MPs voted in favor of neutrality. What was the consequence of the voting? Well, the consequence of the voting was that it split South, the white portion of South Africa in two with half in favor of the war and half against. And the, the uh, faction in favor of the war won. So South Africa went to war, but while the war was, uh, we were fighting the war in the north of Africa and later in Italy, there was a great deal of political activity at home. And that the next 10 years saw the rise of the ANC and the ANC Youth League, uh, strong opposition uh, to segregation in the Indian community, the rise, the commun involvement of the Communist Party, and uh, and 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 coloured organisations, particularly in the Cape. So by the end of the war, um, Smuts, who won the war vote, uh, lost the election to the um, to the National Party of BF Milan, and then we had the next. 40 odd years of apartheid. So the war uh, produced all sorts of uh, unintended consequences in South Africa politically. Mm -hmm. And can you briefly explain to us how uh, John Smarts and James Herzog differed in their approaches to local and social issues? Yes, uh, they, they, the big difference was over membership of the, um, the empire and the commonwealth. Uh, South Africa was a member of the common of the empire in those days, a dominion. Um, Herzog fought against that uh, uh, for most of his political career. Smuts was a believer that South Africa, and South, in order to had to had to punch above its weight internationally by joining a bigger organisation like the Empire and the Commonwealth. And when Hitler decided to go to war uh, in uh, in, in Europe in 1939, uh, Smuts and his uh, uh, faction of the coalition party that he fought the war vote by uh, 13 votes uh, over Herzog, uh, who wanted to keep South Africa neutral in the war. And can you talk to us about a decision in 1938 where Smarts agreed to signing an intent to remain neutral in Britain? Uh, well, earlier you see there was a fusion government in the 1930s between Smuts and Herzog, who were actually sworn enemies. But they knew they agreed on a lot of things, including segregation. But they differed on, uh, on, on South Africa's international obligations. And when war broke out, Smuts was insistent that South Africa had to fight on the side of the British. Herzog was against. And Herzog uh, forced a cabinet decision in, I think, 1936, saying South Africa would uh, remain neutral in the case of a war, which Smuts agreed to. But then, in 1938, when he saw what Hitler's actual intentions were and the danger to South Africa uh, of remaining neutral, he decided South Africa had to go to war. And then he won that very narrow majority in favor of going to war. Mm -hmm. And can you briefly talk to us about Smuts' persuasion to the cabinet? Uh, well, the cabinet was split, um, but Smuts, there were enough people in the cabinet uh, I think it was the cabinet was almost seven six split, uh, so it was that narrow um, in favour of going to. Was I think those seven cabinet members understood uh, that South Africa had to fulfil its international obligations and couldn't remain neutral. Mm -hmm. And can you talk to us about the khaki victory for Smuts and the difficulties he had trying to solve the race problem in South Africa? Well, um, look, Smuts had a very difficult time after he had to he had to revive the South African Defence Force. He had to arrange for South Africa to fight abroad. 
At the same time, he had to put down an arm revolt by the Afrikaner right wing in South Africa. He also, the, there were huge economic implications for South Africa going to the war. Um, particularly the Africans from the reserves were drawn to the towns because the economy had to, South Africa became the workshop of Africa in the war. And there were lots of jobs on offer and uh, black Africans streamed from the reserves into the towns and political problems came with that for smuts and, uh, and, and he had to deal. So he had to, he had to put his finger on, or he had to try and put out an awful lot of fires during the war, all the while keeping South Africa's economy going and, 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 and troops supplied. So he had a very difficult, role which ultimately he 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 couldn't uh, pull off successfully when he lost the election after the war in 1948. And Richard can you talk to us more about the failure of the 1946 miners strike which actually had a significant political consequence in that it brought African and Indian uh, activists closer? Yes well the failure of the miners strike was that it 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 you know the it was put down uh, by the police, uh, uh, and it 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 caused uh, a great deal of of, of uh, p- political upheaval, and it also um, it brought. You see, it happened in 1946, and at the same time, uh, there was great pressure on Smuts from his. Remember, we, there was only a white electorate in those days, and Smuts came under increasing pressure to do something about the growth, the spread of Indians into the Indian community, into white business areas and white residential areas. But when the miners' strike um, happened and was put down violently uh, or forcefully, um, after that, Indian politicians decided it was time to make common cause with the ANC uh, and it was that political uh, coming together which had enormous implications uh, for the future of South African politics. So that was, it wasn't so much the miners' strike on its own, it was the miners' strike and the, uh, the, the doctors' pact between uh, A.B. Zuma, who was head of the ANC, and Indian doctors who led the uh, the South African Indian Congress, the, the the Indian Congresses in those days, they came together and formed a political alliance, which developed throughout the 1950s. Mm-hmm. And can you briefly narrate the rise of black political opposition and activism post World War II, with reference to the African National Congress? Well, the book ends in 1950. I don't go into that in any uh, great detail, uh, say because I, I'm really wanting to show what happened in the 1940s when A.B. Zuma, who's, a, who's a, an African doctor who studied uh, in the U.S., uh, came back and revitalized the ANC, which had been practically moribund for the last uh, during the last decade. He made the ANC into an organization, uh, and then the youth leaguers, the Mandelas, the Tambos, the Susulus, and others, uh, created the ANC Youth League, which was a very powerful um, uh, body within the wider ANC. And it was that body, the ANC and Mandela, Tambo, and those who thought like him, who had this tremendous impact after the war and in the 1950s. Um, so, say, stirrings of nationalism that arose as a direct consequence of going to war in, the 19, in 1939. Mm-hmm. And lastly, what are you hoping people take away by reading your book? Well, one of the themes of the book is that, that South Africa had, at that stage, Africans were represented by a, um, a representative council, a native representative council, which was very highly regarded in the black community, but it n- failed to make any headway nationally because the white government at the time took no notice of it. 
And really, I think the message of the book is that the 40s were a time of missed opportunity. If, if, if recognition had been given to people like Z.K. Matthews and A.B. Zuma, Z.K. Matthews, and the ANC uh, youth leaguers, uh, Jordan and Gabani and others, South Africa might have gone on, uh, embarked on a far more democratic road than it has done. And that it was the failure of, 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 act, of attempts to bring people together in the 1940s that eventually led to the, uh, in fact, to the, to the divisions that we still see today. So it's really what one can learn from a period of our history. That was Richard Stein speaking to Krima Media's Polity about seven votes, how World War II changed South Africa forever.